up everyone welcome back to my channel and if you are new welcome my name is Meg and over here is Luna and today I am finally putting up my review on the Morphe and James Charles palette I'm apologizing in advance if this video is a hot mess please don't mind my makeup I've had it on for about 10 hours not that any of you care but this is my second time filming the review because I was just editing it and I wasn't happy with it because there's so much to discuss in this video. I'm going to try to keep it as concise as possible. But let me just lay out the plan for the week. So every single day on my channel this week, I will be uploading a video related to this palette. So there's so much going on with this palette. I'm going to touch on some of the issues, some of the controversy that is surrounding this palette that has led me to make other videos. So for example, in James's video, he mentions that these shadows are best used with an eyelid primer, not a concealer. So I have a video where I'm testing out that theory, one eye concealer, one eye primer, which is better. I also have tutorials showing you the colorful looks. I also have neutral looks, and I'm also going to be comparing this, the brighter pops of color in this palette to the BH Take Me Back to Brazil palette to see, you know, to have that battle it out. So there's going to be a lot going on this week. If this is not your jam, I totally get it. I hope you come back next week for more regularly scheduled videos and hopefully all the James Charles videos will be put past us. If you are new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos I have. I put so much hard work and effort into this, so I really hope you guys appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get into the palette. This is what the Unicarton looks like. This is probably the first Unicarton that I'm going to hold on to for a little bit because I really love the main look behind this palette. Um, I may keep it for reference to do a recreation in the future. The back. Oh my god, I like try, like I don't want to shade James at all, okay? Like I really don't, I don't want to be kind of nitpicking him. I do have some things I want to say about Morphe, but <laughs> the back has a little thing from James. It was cute in his video how he read it, but I kind of wish he went down here. We'll get down here in a few minutes. Um... <laughs> Yes, here it is. Here is the palette. I really like the packaging. I feel like if I were to collab with a brand, it would probably be black too because I mean that's literally what I wear every day. For comparison reasons for size, this is a Jaclyn Hill palette compared to James's palette. Jaclyn's palette has 35. James's has 39. Of course, his is larger because we have these big rows, this big row in the middle. So you can see that the rest of the shadows are typical Morphe size, but in case you want an idea of how big the palette was. One thing that I want to talk about first is the setup of this palette. I am so appreciative of the setup because it makes sense. I feel like some of us get eyeshadow palettes. We will look at the layout. It's a little bit confusing. We don't know what colors to pair with what. And this palette just spells it out for us. So thank you so much for James and Morphe to designing this layout. I think it is absolutely perfect. If you are intimidated by this palette, I'm going to break it down for you in a hopefully helpful way that makes sense. So, first of all, it's very divided. Neutral everyday shades are the first three rows, and then of course the bright fun colors are the last two rows. If you're intimidated by this, each row, except for the middle, is set up in quadrants. So if you want to start off small, these four shadows can make a quad, these four. You can literally break that down throughout the entire palette. What I, I think a helpful way for me to look at this is if you want to wear something more than four shadows, maybe six is a good start for a look. It also breaks down that way. So these six right here, you can think of as a mini palette. Move along. These six, you can think of as a mini palette to put colors together. And then also right here, you can repeat these two and make a sixer that way. The middle row is already designed to be its own palette. Um, James explained that these are the most common or most used shadows in a palette. So they're a little bit bigger, so you don't run out quite as quickly. And I just want to take a second right here to say I am so appreciative that there is a matte 
white in this palette. Every review, if you guys are a subscriber of mine, you know, every palette review, I gripe that there's no cream or no white shades in a palette. So thank you, James, for putting the white in here. I love it. And this is actually light enough for my skin tone too, so I'm really appreciative of that. Um, this shade he described as a highlighter. For me, it's a little bit too dark, and you'll see me test it out in a future video. You'll see how it works out for me, but I actually really enjoy using Ring Light and Sister as a combination for highlight. You'll see that throughout the different videos throughout the week, but while we're here, I just wanted to mention that really quickly. Moving along to the bottom row, which is probably the most intimidating to a lot of people. Again, you can break it down into fours, or you can use this as a row of six. Again, you can take these two left over to make a row of six this way, or you can take this to make a row of six. And then of course, the pink and purple could be a row of six by itself. So if you're, again, if you're intimidated by this, this could be a really good way to maneuver around the palette. And the more you use it, the more, more familiar you'll be with the colors, the easier it'll be for you to put looks together. All right. I also love that he designed this palette in mind for working makeup artists because it is a little bit of everything in one palette. So appreciative of that. That was, I'm not going to lie, the main draw for me. And I was excited for an eyeshadow palette with colors. So thank you, James, for being brave enough to do a collaboration and throw some bright colors in there. Now let's go ahead and get into some of the nitpicky parts of the video. Um, if you have not watched James's video and you picked up this palette, please watch it. And if it's been a while, watch it again because there's a lot of helpful information because I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very, very tricky palette to work with. And when I say that, I'm mainly speaking about the bottom two rows. If I talk about it's difficult to work with, it's hard to crack the code. It's mainly these last two rows. The first three rows from what I've experienced so far have been pretty easy peasy and pretty typical to work with. So in his video, I also have to commend him because he mentions that shimmers are best applied with the finger. Every review I say, no matter the brand, no matter the formulation, shimmer will always be applied best with your finger. You'll get the best payoff that way. And I'm so glad to hear him say that with this palette. It's just nice to have that confirmation from somebody that actually created this palette. And he also said shimmers will work great with the damp brush. I'm like having eyeshadows transfer onto my chest. So let's ignore that. Another plus for me with this palette is the price point. It's $39. There's 39 shadows, a dollar for eyeshadow. How can you complain about that? Now the two main things that are sticking out for me because when I get an eyeshadow palette, I avoid YouTube videos like the plague. I don't want it to bias my review at all. So you will see me kind of struggle with things throughout the rest of the week in the other videos, but I've kind of learned as I go, as I went. And then the other night I did start to watch some videos to see how people were remedying some of the issues I had, if I was the only one having issues, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but most of this is me not knowing hardly anything at all about the palette in future videos. So please keep that in mind um, so you don't rip me apart in the comment section. But the two main complaints that I've seen online on Twitter with this palette is the eyelid primer versus concealer thing, which is addressed in the probably next video coming out, and the pressed pigments. So I don't want this to be the main focus of the video. I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible. Basically, um, let's just go ahead and take a look, shall we? I really wish James addressed this in his reveal video, but right here we see eyeshadow with an eye, and down here we see pressed pigment with a line through the eye, basically indicating not eye safe, although there should be verbiage saying that the FDA does not deem these pigments eye safe, um, instead of there just being a picture. And you see quite a lot of the shades. Shades in this palette that are considered pressed pigments, 518, Rusted, Mary, You're Kidding, Boutique, Benny, Tune, B, Brother, Artistry, Love That, Pinkity Drinkity, Cola, Escape, single, and skip. 16 of the 39 shadows are not considered eye safe, 
according to the FDA. So what does that mean? A lot of brands that are trying to be cruelty free and vegan friendly cannot use carmine in their shadows. Carmine is often used to create red pigment and carmine is basically crushed up beetles. Um, a lot of brands were using it in the past. A lot of brands are luckily moving towards being cruelty free and vegan. So in order to get pigment, they have to use different levels of red dye. So to create the reds, the orange, the yellows, the purples, the blues, all of those have a lot of red pigment in them. So that is why a majority of the colored shadows in this palette um, are considered not eye safe. Here's the tea on that. These shadows, not all of them, but some of them may cause staining on your eyelid. Not every single pressed pigment in the world is going to stain your lid. Some of them may, it depends. Typically the most, the more vibrant a shadow is, the more likely it is to stain your lid or the higher of red dye it contains, the more likely it is to stain your lid. Basically the FDA sees something staining your lid as dyeing your skin. So that is why it's not considered to be eye safe. Jen Loves Reviews does an excellent explanation on this. I will link her videos down below. She actually talks to a cosmetic chemist and explains it a lot further. So if you're interested in learning more and educating yourself about that, please check out her video. This is just information that I have gathered from being around YouTube and being around makeup for about the past 10 years. It is recommended to remove any possible staining with an oil-based makeup remover and you should be good to go. And the more sensitive skin you have, the more easily affected you may be like with this. You're not gonna go blind from it. You're not gonna end up in the hospital. Nothing horrific is gonna happen. If anything, you're gonna have a slight wash of color on your lids the next day. So like I said, if that's a bother to you, use an oil-based makeup remover or just throw on some concealer and call it a day. I will say that Skip, which is the bright pink, it was really no surprise to me, honestly. I was expecting it to stain my lid. This, this shadow right over here left a slight stain on my eyes. When I woke up the next morning, it was mostly gone. It doesn't bother me. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Just to mention, this is the Morphe 12P. The pink in here stained my lids way more than Skip did. Um, so it's not unheard of. This isn't the first time this is happening in an eyeshadow palette. Another thing I want to mention while we're here talking about the breast pigments, right? They're the more difficult shadows to work with. Typically in a palette, the more vibrant the shadow, the more difficult it is going to be to work with, to get on, to blend, to spread out. James mentioned that it is best to pack it on, but I wish he went a little bit more in depth explaining that because Escape, there's no blending it it will erase itself and get patchy. So this color you strictly have to pack on. You'll see me experience this in other videos. I feel like Brother is another one and Cola too. Those are the probably the three most difficult shadows in this palette to get looking decent on your eye. There is also a lot of people complaining about the swatches and I'm here to say swatches are not end all be all. Swatches don't mean anything. They don't matter. It's just to say, hey, this is what the color looks like on my arm. Because you know what? A shadow could swatch horribly on your arm but perform beautifully on your eye. And a shadow that swatches and looks so amazing and so vibrant and so bright could look horrible on your eye. So the best thing to do, watch tutorials. You know, play around with the shadows yourself. See if you can get them to blend out. Typically, if you're a subscriber of mine, you know I always do eye swatches. So that means every matte shadow is getting blended out on my crease and every shimmer is getting packed onto my lid. But I just literally, I couldn't, I couldn't handle doing 39. This, it was too much for me. So I have to skip out on that today. I'm very sorry about that. Um, but typically I do eye swatches because what matters is how the shadow performs on your eye and how it looks, how it works. Now I'm going to insert the clips on how I got this warm tone smoky eye so you can see how the shadows I use perform for that. And we will be back to do a wrap up. Final thoughts. Just interjecting really quickly, I already have my eyes primed. Again, I use the Morphe primer, and now I'm going to set the primer with a combination of face and canvas on this really big fluffy brush. So I'm just gonna put that all over my lid, and then I can get started with blending the rest of my shadows. <laughs>
here is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me show you how to get a warm toned smoky eye from the James Charles Morphe palette. One more thing before I get into my final thoughts, I realized as soon as I turned the camera off, as soon as I ripped my lashes off, I forgot to mention. I have a bone to pick with Murphy because I feel like they really throw their influencers under the bus. So this is not a complaint towards James or towards any other influencer that collabed with them. This is strictly a complaint with Morphe. So we saw this happen before with Jaclyn Hill. I remember there was some kind of controversy surrounding her original palette you saw earlier. And with the vault collection, I'm sure we all remember all the drama involved in that. Not once did we see Morphe step up to address issues people were having. Jaclyn maybe took it upon herself to try to address those issues because of course her name is attached to this palette, to this collection, to this brand. Um, but I really truly feel that that is something that Morphe should have addressed. Maybe the expectation was Jacqueline needs to address it for us or maybe Jacqueline will address it for us and we won't have to and she'll have to be the one to look bad. I really think it's the responsibility of the brand. At the end of the day, the influencers do not own Morphe. They are not running Morphe. They are not the CEOs. It is Morphe that is putting out the product. It is their brand. At the end of the day, they should be the ones addressing this. It's the same thing with the pressed pigment, with the staining issues. It should not be James's responsibility to defend his palette and to talk about this staining issue. It is something that Morphe should be addressing to the public, not necessarily James. However, I get, again, his name is on this. His face is on this. He's associated with it. He wants to defend it because it is something that he loves and something that he created. But at the end of the day, I feel like Morphe, again, should not be letting him throw himself under the bus. They should be speaking out and addressing these issues. And now I can probably say goodbye to my chances of ever getting on their PR list. Now let's go on to the pros and cons and if I recommend this palette to you. Here's the deal with my final thoughts on this palette. Let's go over the pros. The pros is that it is made for working makeup artists in mind. It is made for those that love color but also, you know, some neutral eyes. So it is literally the palette that has just about everything you can need. So that is definitely a big plus for me. The price point is there, $39, 39 eyeshadows, not a bad bargain at all. Um, it, I'm really appreciative of how this palette is laid out and organized. I think that that is super great. It will make it easy for those intimidated or not used to working with color. Maybe it will be helpful to you and encourage you to step into the realm of color a little bit more. However, I don't think this is a beginner palette and I get why James can't really vocalize that because he does have 10 million followers. He focuses a lot on tutorials, sure, but he also does a lot of videos and collaborations with YouTubers outside of the beauty community. So he has such a wide range of fans. So I can see the frustration in people that may be new to makeup or don't really step outside of everyday natural neutral makeup. I can see why people are a little bit thrown off and complaining about this palette because like he said, it can be a little bit tricky and you definitely have to figure out how to work with it. So for me, it took me about three or four tries with this palette to get it figured out to know what works, what doesn't work. And even for me, who is not a novice at makeup, that's a lot, <laughs> a lot of work to put into a palette. Um, to figure out how to use it properly. So it is very difficult to work with. You will have to pack things on even in the crease with your blending brush, pack it into the crease, blend it out afterwards. Some shades, like I said, they virtually cannot be really blended out without it going patchy or lifting up. And again, it's these blues and purples that are definitely part of the struggle bus. And then again, with the palette of being a little bit more on the finicky side, you have to use an eyelid primer. Most of us are using concealer as an eye base, so that's another product that we have to go out and purchase. James recommended, of course, some Morphe primer, which I ended up purchasing. MAC Paint Pot, which I personally find a little bit on the greasy side. Nowadays, I used to love it, but I think they changed something in the formula. And the P. Louise base, which I would love to try if it wasn't based out in the UK. So... Would I recommend this palette? If you are a makeup lover and you want more colors in your life, I think that this is something that you can consider if you're looking for a pal palette that has color and neutral shades. Um, I think you should go for it. If you're a fan of James and you just have to have this palette, then of course nothing's really gonna stop you from buying it. 
but if you have a lot of neutral shades and you're not one for color, I think you can skip out on this if you're a beginner at makeup. This also may be something you want to skip out on for now and maybe pick up when you get a little bit more experienced. Um, and then again, if you are somebody that already has a lot of these colors in your collection, I don't really think you're missing out on anything much. Um, my main shadow here that I was most excited about is Artistry, and I was a little bit disappointed. You'll see in the video um, with the primer versus concealer, I use it there. It was very sheer. It wasn't as pigmented as I thought. Um, but if you already have similar things, I don't think you're missing out on anything amazing. I will say the first three rows are typical Morphe quality. They're easy to work with. They're pigmented. They're easy to blend. Um, so that is another plus of the palette as well. I know this video was super long, but with this palette, there's so much going on with it and so many, so many rumors, so much controversy, so many issues and non-issues with the palette. So I hope you got a well-rounded review. And like I said, if you continue to watch the rest of the videos I put out, you will get to see me actually work, what I struggle with, and how I corrected issues I was struggling with. So if you're having problems too, you're not alone. Stay tuned and hopefully those videos will help you. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave today. Check out my other videos listed down below and I also recently started a new channel called Crystal Corner so be sure to check that out as well. I will have it listed in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye everyone!